In this video we'll be building an electroplating station. It's a cheap and easy process and it lets you turn your 3D printed parts into metal. The idea is actually pretty simple. Just take the 3D printed part and some copper. Connect both to a battery and put them in some salty water. Let it sit for a few hours and you'll be left with this beautiful shiny part. <coughs> Alright, I think we need some upgrades. First, let's make the part spin. That way it's getting plated from all the sides evenly and we won't have these copper crystals growing everywhere. For that we can use a DC motor and suspend it above the container. It would also be useful to have the motor slide so we can control the speed of the plating. Lastly, we should change the salty water for an actual electrolyte. With these improvements we should get something that isn't a total garbage. Let's start with the mechanical design first. I have this motor lying around, but it's spinning too fast, so a gear reduction is needed. I tried printing a planetary gearbox, but it just wouldn't turn. I printed it again and it's even worse. I decided to design a brand new gearbox. It has two arms attached to it, which suspend it above the container. The assembly is pretty simple. Most of the stuff is just press fit and clicks into place. To connect the arms I added some heated inserts. If you don't know what these are, it's a piece of metal with a thread. You just press them into a hole with a soldering iron and they make a strong bolted joint. The part will be held with an alligator clip attached to the output shaft of the gearbox. To transfer the current to the rotating part, I use this wire as a brush. Alright, looks like it transfers the voltage pretty well, so we can move on to the electrolyte design. An electrolyte is a fluid that enables the copper to be transported to the part. There's a lot of literature on electrolytes, so I ignored all of it and asked ChatGPT instead. It came up with these ingredients. You can get all of them in a hardware store. Electrolytes normally use sulfuric acid, but I wanted to avoid it because it's quite toxic. Copper sulfate is the main ingredient. It releases ions of copper into the water, which are then deposited onto the part, plating it. Although these ions will run out, so you still need the copper electrode to replenish them. And what do the other additives do? I have no idea. I started with the gelatin. You are supposed to slowly add it into warm water while mixing it, but I found that out too late. Next, I measured citric acid and salt. After filling up a container with distilled water, I just mix all of the ingredients together. If you're gonna make this, be cautious with the copper sulfate. It's toxic, so wear gloves, don't stir it with a failed 3D printed part, and don't flush it down the drain, you must dispose it correctly. For the circuit I'll be using a 5 volt 1.5 amp power supply from my USB. I connected the 5 volts to the copper and the ground to the brush which is in contact with the part. The motor is rated for 5 volts so I connected it in parallel as well. Since the station is finished I 3D printed this Ironman helmet to test it. Now 3D prints aren't exactly conductive but you can put something conductive on them. I'll be using graphite paint which you can buy online. Alright, so I was just about to spray paint this helmet on my balcony and then this guy showed up. I went to a different balcony and sprayed it with about 4 layers of graphite paint. After a few minutes of drying I attached the part to a copper wire and also put some thinner wire on the inside to increase the contact points. Ok, now we have everything set up. Let's turn on the motor and let the plating begin. While it's getting plated, I wanna explain how this stuff actually works, because it's kind of crazy. I mean you're taking this copper and somehow transferring it through the fluid onto the 3D print. Imagine you have a container filled with electrically conductive fluid, an electrolyte. Place the conductive object you want to coat on one side and place a piece of copper on the other. Now, when you connect the object to the negative terminal of a battery and the piece of copper to the positive terminal, something interesting happens. 
The electrons in copper are attracted to the positive charge of the battery. So sometimes, two electrons escape from a copper atom. They then flow into the battery and leave behind a positively charged ion of copper. The ion is then attracted to the negatively charged object and flows towards it through the electrolyte. After reaching the object, which is negatively charged by the surplus of electrons, two electrons jump to the positive copper ion. This creates neutral copper atom, which deposits onto the object. By this process, the piece of copper will be gradually transferred to the object, electroplating it. The process of losing electrons is known as oxidation, and the gain of electrons is called reduction. Alright, I think the helmet should be plated by now. Let's take it out and do some final touches. The copper anode is a bit corroded. The helmet is covered with the gelatin. I think 20 grams was too much. I removed the wire and then started sending the copper down. I went from 400 grit all the way to 1500. Some of the copper peeled off and it doesn't look the best. The copper layer is too thin. You can also see the lines from 3D printing. Let's try it again and let it play for longer. This time I'm also gonna send the printed helmet before spraying it to smooth out the 3D printed lines. I let the helmet play for 30 hours. The copper layer is much thicker and weighs about 40 grams. You can see how corroded the electrode is. This is looking much better, although the back still didn't plate. I think this is because the motor spins too fast. Otherwise it has almost mirror finish. It feels like a solid piece of metal too. It has some weight to it. Lastly I'm gonna electroplate the deadly hollow symbol from Harry Potter. This is a very simple electroplating station and it has some drawbacks. The motor still spins too fast and the electrolyte, designed by ChatGPT, has pieces of gelatin in it. I'll make an upgraded version in a future video and plate some more stuff, but right now I'm busy building the hexapod. Make sure to subscribe, like and I'll see you soon.